Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. The Council of Representative Speaker Fazea Sanal and the Speaker of the UAE Federal National Council, Asaka Kobash, held joint parliamentary talks as part of Sanal's official visit to Abu Dhabi. Sanal affirmed the depth of historic relations between Bahrain and the UAE under the leadership of His Majesty the King and UAE President. She stressed that the well-established fraternal relations between Bahrain and the UAE are based on strong ties and firm pillars in the political, economic, security, social, cultural and developmental fields, as well as bilateral developmental projects. Zanal noted that the Bahrain and the UAE are one nation with one destiny, bound by deep fraternal relations. The two sides discussed the attacks of the terrorist Houthi militia on UAE lands and facilities, condemning and denouncing terrorism and extremism. Zanal affirmed Bahrain's firm stance in support of the UAE and all measures it takes to defend its lands and achieve security and stability for its citizens and residents in the face of any terrorist targeting. The Speaker of the Federal National Council welcomed Zainal and affirmed that the current stage demonstrates the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the UAE and reflects the common destiny and interests. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, chaired the Civil Defence Council. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Oil, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Industry and Commerce and Tourism, the Minister of Information Affairs, Chief of Public Security, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Deputy CEO of the Electricity and Water Authority, and Deputy CEO of the Supreme Council of Environment. The Minister of Interior welcomed the members, highlighting that the meeting comes within civil protection measures to ensure the public safety of citizens and residents. The meeting began with discussing topics in the agenda, including joint national exercises within the disaster management plan. He stressed the importance of implementing those drills in association with various sectors and through realistic scenarios. The meeting affirmed the significance of swift response in dealing with incidents and building general safety capabilities. The Council was briefed on the outcomes of the operations of the Committee of Civil Defence Volunteers. The meeting also reviewed the rules of the Law of Public Security and Voluntary Services to promote loyalty, nationalism and social responsibility to protect security and stability. The Council discussed safety conditions at homes, private establishments and work and procedures to develop them to protect lives and property. At the end of the meeting, the Minister of Interior expressed thanks and appreciation to the Council members for the dedication and coordination to enhance security and safety rates among citizens and residents. Bahrain was elected as the International Bureau of Education, the IBE Council Vice President of UNESCO in Geneva. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Al Nuemi, congratulated His Majesty the King, expressing appreciation for the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the Ministry. Al Nuemi affirmed that Bahrain will make efforts to achieve the goals of the Member States Office, which is considered one of the educational institutions of UNESCO. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications and Chairman of Bahrain Airport Company, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, inspected the second and final stage of construction work in the new passenger terminal building. He listened to a detailed explanation on the programme and stages of workflow and the stages that the main contract has completed since its inception in February 2021. He emphasised the necessity to adhere to the programme to ensure the completion of the project on time. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Gulf Air, Syed Al Ziani, presented the Prince Salman bin Hamad Medical for Medal Merit to the national cadres of Gulf Air's employees in implementation of the Royal Order and within the context of the Directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister to all concerned authorities to hand the front medal to frontline workers. Aziani affirmed that His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister appreciate the national efforts of all frontline workers in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, including healthcare professionals, BDF, the Ministry of Interior and all supporting authorities, which represents an impetus to continue working in the national carrier with the same determination that continued throughout the pandemic to achieve the desired goals. He praised the airline's efforts to provide services without interruption or disruption. 
He stressed that maintaining what has been achieved to date requires making more efforts to reach the desired success, noting the services of Gulf Air staff and their outstanding and tangible impact during the pandemic. He also expressed appreciation for the keenness to maintain the health and safety of community members. The chairman stressed that the efforts of the national carrier have continued since the beginning of the pandemic and to this day. The CEO of the National Space Science Authority, the NSSA, Dr. Mohamed al Asiri, revealed the launch date of the first joint Bahraini Emirati satellite, Light One, from the International Space Station in orbit to start its operation, will be at noon tomorrow. Dr. al Asiri affirmed that the start of the second phase of launching the, the Light One satellite comes as a result of the cooperation between the two brotherly countries and as a translation of the royal vision of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and under the supervision and follow-up of the National Security Advisor, Commander of the Royal Guard and Secretary General of the Supreme Defence Council, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to keep pace with modern global trends in space sciences. Dr Al Asiri said that this major event will be broadcast live on Bahrain TV, in cooperation and coordination between the International Space Station the Japanese space station and the NSSA, where space engineer Aisha Al-Haram will give the launch signal after making sure that the satellite is ready to launch into its orbit. He explained that the Light One satellite will start operating about five hours after its launch and after receiving a signal from the satellite from the ground station, and then it will need approximately 30 days to make experimental measurements through the commands that will be sent to it from the ground station and measure the extent of its responses to it. And then the measuring of gamma rays will begin, which is the main mission of the satellite. The alternative sentencing law represents one of the honourable milestones in human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The law's value has been increased by the royal directives to expand the application of the law, which affirms the reality of human rights in Bahrain is full of legislation, achievements and constructive initiatives. Inmates who are subject to alternative sentencing law criteria affirm their appreciation from this step and its role in the reintegration into society. Bahrain has proven that it is a country that practices human rights and believes that preserving them is an integral part of its national constraints in the Kingdom. The Ministry of Interior's General Directorate of Implementation of Sentences and Alternative Sanctions is working on expanding the implementation of the alternative sentencing and open prisons under the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, due to the great benefits for rehabilitation as well as strengthening social fabric. And to speak more about that, we are joined over the phone by the Alternative Sanctions Officer, First Lieutenant Nasser Sultan Aramahi. Hello First Lieutenant, the General Directorate of Implementations of Sentences and Alternative Sanctions normally looks at the applications of inmates for alternative sentences and open prisons programme. What are the requirements to attain that? Yes, uh, good evening all. Uh, in the beginning, uh, since the alternative uh, sanctions law uh, issued in uh, 2017, uh, there was four major conditions. Uh, first, not to harm the public security. Second, good uh, conduct and uh, behavior uh, in the uh, rehab center. Also finish it half of uh, the sentence uh, uh, and finally paid all the uh, financial uh, obligations. As a, a department, uh, we saw uh, the ways to uh, widen uh, to the uh, implementation of the alternative san sanction uh, for uh, a bigger uh, range. Uh, after uh, the assurance uh, of uh, Royal Decree number 24 for the year 2021, uh, it cancelled uh, the finishing uh, of the uh, half of the sentence and give uh, and gives the, uh, the Ministry of Interior uh, the right uh, for the application to the uh, judge, which. Uh, give uh, the apportioning to uh, a, wi a, wi a wider uh, range uh, of uh, beneficiaries uh, after studying uh, their uh, condition from uh, different perspe uh, perspectives. 
The expansion in implementing these sentences has been beneficial for a wide number of inmates in different cases. Can you tell us more about that and how it impacted the beneficiaries? Yeah, uh, thanks for His Majesty's vision, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Kingdom of Bahrain uh, became a pioneer uh, idol in human rights, and His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and uh, Prime Minister, uh, to within the implementation uh, of the alternative uh, sanction uh, sanctions law. Uh, and starting the open uh, prisons uh, program, which reflects uh, his uh, ambition to uh, develop the uh, legislative uh, system to uh, guarantee the uh, human rights and reflects uh, the uh, ideal approach for uh, the kingdom of Bahrain uh, and uh, achievement uh, human rights in human rights. Uh, we have more and more uh, beneficiaries every day. Uh, we reached uh, 3,826 and uh, expect, uh, expecting uh, the uh, number uh, will rise uh, with the um, implementation of the open prisons uh, program, uh, which will give an uh, activation uh, for uh, merging uh, the beneficiaries uh, with the community. And that was yeah. Alternative Sanctions Officer, First Lieutenant Nasser Sultan Aramehi. Thank you for joining us. The Government Service Centre's Evaluation Committee visited the Ministry of Housing to review the level of various housing services at the Ministry. During the visit, Assistant Undersecretary for Housing Policies and Services, Dr Khaled al Haydan, praised the efforts of the Evaluation Committee, which comes within the framework of the government's keenness to enable customer service centres to provide services with the highest levels of efficiency and effectiveness, stressing that the Ministry of Housing has been raising the level of various housing services and providing all the necessary facilities to serve citizens. He pointed out that the housing services have reached advanced stages in terms of electronic transformation and the automation of information and data as the housing services have become 100% electronic and are available on the e-government portal and the housing app as well as the Ministry's online platform. The National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, is following up with agents and importers to supply the local markets with the COVID-19 antigen rapid test devices. NHRA Chief Executive Officer Dr. Mariam Al-Jalama said that agents and importers affirmed that batches of COVID-19 antigen rapid test kits we provided this month. She said that the authority has contacted agents and importers to ensure the dates for supplying the kingdom with the batches of the kits, adding that the authority is following up on the demand on the devices at licensed pharmacies. She said that local agents who are authorised to import the COVID-19 antigen rapid test kits can contact the suppliers directly to provide the required quantities in local markets.